Mount St. Helens exploded violently in 1980 blasting more than 500 million tons of pulverized rock uh, into the 1980, air. Since 1980, over 100 volcanoes have erupted around the world and nearly a dozen within the United States uh, alone. Uh, the ash bursts observed rising to 10,000 feet above the crater and an ash column rising to an estimated elevation of about 32 to 35,000 feet and that the ash plume extended to the southeast for more than and, 60 uh, miles. It's a very distinct uh, plume of ash, uh, obviously uh, right in the middle of a very active phase of the eruption. And uh, it's not just a, a small ash puff. This is uh, streaming downstream several hundred kilometers. Okay, do you have a good sight on the uh, ash plume at this time? Yeah, it's just cloudy. It uh, could be ash. It's uh, just a little browner than the normal cloud, but... Uh In 1989, Mount Redoubt in uh, Alaska erupted, uh, and a KLM 747 entering, uh, approaching Anchorage International Airport also encountered the volcanic ash, had similar consequence. All four engines uh, uh, flamed out, and uh, they had to declare an emergency. They also were able to recover uh, two engines and make an emergency landing into Anchorage without any further effect. Volcanic ash encounters are real and serious threats to jet aircraft operations within North America and throughout the world. Encounters with volcanic ash can cause severe damage to jet aircraft. The repair bills for just one plane have reached as high as $80 million. Air traffic controllers must be prepared to deal with the serious hazard of volcanic ash. This videotape explains why volcanic ash is so dangerous to aircraft. The air traffic control procedures that should be used during volcanic events. And how to work with pilots during volcanic ash encounters to help ensure the safety of the aircraft and passengers. Volcanic eruptions occur about 60 times a year throughout the world, and about 10 of them are major eruptions that throw huge plumes of volcanic ash high into the atmosphere. There are many sources of information about volcanic eruptions in progress. Television newscasts, the U.S. Geologic Survey, NWS, NOAA, NOTAMS, and SIGMETS. However, Many volcanoes are in remote areas and are not monitored. These often erupt without prior warning, creating unknown ash hazards. An eruption can expel hundreds of millions of tons of ash into the atmosphere. An ash cloud propelled by the jet stream can rapidly spread across thousands of miles. A faraway volcano can create dangerous problems in your airspace so you've got to take volcanic eruptions seriously. Ash clouds are seldom detected by airborne or ground-based radar systems, so you must rely on PIREPs and other sources of information, such as NWS or NOAA, to determine an ash cloud's presence and location. Encounters with volcanic ash can rapidly destroy aircraft components and result in loss of all power Volcanic ash is composed of sharp, hard fragments of glass and rock that can range in size from powder up to an eighth of an inch in diameter. 
The sharp fragments strike forward-facing surfaces of aircraft, such as windows and leading edges of wings, and act as abrasives. Ash clouds also contain sulfur dioxide, which combines with water vapor in the atmosphere and produces sulfuric acid, which may have long-term effects on the aircraft. Ash can also penetrate air intakes for the flight instruments, such as the pitot static system, and disrupt the operation of essential flight systems. But the most serious hazard occurs when ash is ingested by jet engines. The ash rapidly erodes moving engine parts, such as compressor or turbine blades. Even worse, ash deposits also build up within the hot sections of the engine and restrict airflow, and the glass fragments in the ash can melt and accumulate as glassy deposits, causing flameout and immediate loss of engine power. Recent encounters with ash clouds have caused total loss of engine power in several large passenger aircraft. These airborne encounters with ash are major safety hazards. Ash buildup on airport surfaces is also dangerous to aircraft. Engine blast or wind blows ash into the air, which reduces visibility and increases engine ingestion of the ash, potentially causing loss of thrust during takeoff. Wet ash is a hazard for landing aircraft because the slippery runway surface reduces their braking effectiveness. Air traffic controllers must work to minimize the risk created by volcanic ash, both to aircraft in flight and on the ground. When volcanic eruptions occur, you must collect and disseminate information about ash hazards and help pilots avoid them. You should keep informed about the position of any volcanic ash plume within or adjacent to your area of operation. Remember that volcanic ash clouds will probably not show up on radar. Therefore, you must monitor other sources of information, such as SIGMETs, center weather advisories, and PIREPs. You are also required to solicit PIREPs when volcanic events and volcanic ash clouds are predicted. Take the initiative. Check with aircraft for information on ash cloud location and altitude. The Airman's Information Manual contains a volcanic activity reporting form. Become familiar with the contents of the VAR format. It's an efficient method of collecting complete, clear, and accurate information about potential ash hazards. The top section uses a standard PIREP format. The bottom section covers more detailed information that will not be relayed to you over ATC frequencies. And relay all available information to pilots as soon as possible to ensure that they are aware of the position and altitude of any ash cloud. Controllers should assist pilots to avoid ash hazards altogether, suggest reroutes to avoid known ash clouds, and to avoid forecasted ash clouds. If the aircraft has entered an ash cloud and has advised you that a distress condition exists, consider the aircraft to be in an emergency situation and keep alert because the pilot may deviate from their clearance to escape from the ash cloud. The recommended escape maneuver is to reverse course and begin a descent if terrain permits. But it is the pilot's responsibility to determine the safest escape route from the cloud so do not attempt to provide escape vectors without pilot concurrence. Where terrain permits, do not issue climbs to turbine-powered aircraft until the aircraft has exited from the ash cloud. As engine power increases, more ash is ingested, creating greater potential for serious engine damage. And remember that any turbine-powered aircraft that encounters an ash cloud can potentially experience a complete loss of power. So be prepared for an emergency situation. Volcanic ash can create many problems at terminals. When volcanic ash is present on the airport surface, engine thrust or wind can blow dry ash back into the air, which reduces visibility and increases engine ingestion of the ash. Therefore, controllers should issue clearances that minimize the amount of dry ash that is thrown back into the air. That means 
avoid requiring aircraft to come to a full stop when taxiing, and provide a rolling takeoff for all departures, including heavy aircraft. Be patient. Pilots are trained to allow ash to settle prior to initiating a takeoff roll. And stay alert. Ash ingestion can cause loss of thrust during takeoff. When landing, pilots are trained to use minimum reverse thrust on ash-covered runways, so expect a longer rollout from landing aircraft. And remember that wet ash on the airport surface will reduce braking effectiveness. Finally, volcanic ash conditions may seriously impair normal airport operations. Controllers must be prepared to deal with runway closures, and keeping a runway open may require a large and continuing effort by the airport's ground crew. Flight service station controllers are responsible for briefing pilots on volcanic ash-related hazards. Maintain accurate and timely information on the nature and location of the hazards. Take the initiative and solicit PIREPs. Record the data accurately. And make sure you disseminate the information to everyone who needs it, both in the air and on the ground, through hazardous in-flight weather advisories, NOTAMs, SIGMETs, and pilot weather briefings. Remember, volcanic ash pyreps are now classified as urgent, just like tornadoes and wind shear. As controllers, we need to recognize the nature of the threat posed by volcanic ash. It's serious and dangerous, so we've got to be ready to respond quickly and effectively.